All right, in this uh, video lecture, we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about, I'm trying to get my uh, iPad to sync over here with what I've got on the computer screen. We're going to talk a little bit about skin markings, a couple of types of skin markings, and also skin color. All right, one type of uh, skin marking that we're all familiar with are our fingerprints. And uh, fingerprints actually do have a function. They are um, friction ridges, and uh, they're supposed to help uh, resist slipping. You know, when you're grasping onto something with the skin, those fingerprints, those ridges you were seeing there, are actually supposed to help you be able to grip things a little bit better. And so when you're seeing that, you know, why do you have these fingerprints, these little ridges or waves? Those are actual waves of the epidermis. The epidermis is going up and down in a circular fashion. It's like you have a hill here that is in three dimensions going around in a circle and then you have a little depression in between and then you've got another little ring hill going around that way with a depression in between. And so those are superficial waves of your epidermis moving up and down above the, the underlying dermis. So this is a heavily magnified view of a thumbprint, and you can actually see these little circles you see there. Those are actually openings for the, the ducts of your sweat glands that you have there on that part of the part of your fingers. Okay, another kind of interesting feature of the skin um, are your, let's see, if my iPad came back on here, so I might be able to use my pen. Oops, back up. There we go. Skin markings or cleavage lines. So interestingly, all those collagen fibers we're talking about in your uh, dermis. And um, now we said that they they are arranged in multiple different directions, and that's good. That way, if you're pulling on the skin in this way or that way or that way, uh, you're protected from from the skin being ripped. But as it turns out, a lot of the collagen fibers are arranged in bundles, and uh, many of those bundles are oriented in similar directions when you're um, in, in particular body locations. And so those are called cleavage lines. The reason that those are important, so if you're, for example, uh, across the abdomen here, these cleavage lines, what that means is a lot of the collagen fibers in there are bundled and they run in a transverse direction across the, the abdomen. So what you want to do if you make an incision in that area, you want to make incisions with a scalpel parallel to the cleavage lines. If you do, then the wound is going to heal more easily. If you cut this way across the cleavage lines, it's more difficult for repairs to be made. Um, in the skin and so that can uh, slow down or inhibit healing. It'll take longer to heal. So you can see how those cleavage lines run. So you know, like along the thighs, they kind of run at an angle across the, the surface of the thigh. So if you had to make an incision in the thigh, ideally it would be on an angle like this so that it's running parallel to those cleavage lines. So that's kind of an interesting feature of the skin. You guys can take a look more closely at the diagram or in your textbook to see what the cleavage lines look like in other body areas. How about our skin color? There are three pigments that contribute to skin color. Now we've already talked about melanin. Melanin is a pigment, so it's made by those melanocytes that are in the stratum basale. They produce this melanin and they actually transfer it to the cells in your stratum spinosum because they're the ones that really need that protection from the ultraviolet light of the sun. So once that melanin is inside there, it shields the DNA and helps protect them from damage. But melanin also does contribute to skin color. Um, okay, so if you are, um, if you have a lighter skin versus a darker skin, 
Um, what do you think about this? If you're lighter in skin tone, do you think you have fewer melanocytes than somebody with a very dark skin tone? Now you might think, oh yeah, that's, that probably is the case. As it turns out, um, that's not true. People who have darker skin um, have the same number of melanocytes as people with lighter skin. The difference is, if you have darker skin, your melanocytes tend to make more melanin. Also, if you have lighter skin, um, when you get sun exposure, you got it, or um, you know that we tan, and the tanning is because the melanocytes detect that ultraviolet light that you've been exposed to, and that triggers them to start making more melanin. So that's a type of homeostasis response. Oh, hey, this person is getting more sun exposure, and so we better make more melanin to protect the 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 cells of the skin from possible sun damage. When you have um, freckles, freckles are little local areas where you have overproduction of melanin. Those are freckles. A mole, on the other hand, which can also be called a nevus, is another name for mole. A mole is actually an overgrowth of melanocytes. So, what's the difference between those two? In a freckle, you don't have more of the cells that are making the melanin. It's just that the cells that are there are cranking out more of it, so you wind up with this darker colored spot. When you have a mole, you actually have an overgrowth of melanocytes. So these cells are dividing more frequently than they normally would, and um, that creates a mole at the surface. Okay, a couple of other um, things that contribute to your skin color. One is carotene. That's a yellow to orange chemical, um, which gets deposited in the skin, most notably in the palms and the soles. And uh, that is a, um, a plant chemical. It has a yellowish to orange color. You would find it in carrots and other types of yellow and orange fruits and vegetables. And uh, so we absorb that in from our intestines. It gets into the bloodstream and it winds up being deposited in the skin. And so it can contribute to skin color, which maybe you've seen before. I know my uh, first daughter loved carrots when she was first born. She ate lots and lots and lots of carrots and so she had an orange coloration because she had so much carotene deposited in her skin. So that's something you take in from your diet. Hemoglobin is a reddish colored protein that's present in your red blood cells. That also contributes to your skin coloration. The more blood flow you have to the surface of the skin, the redder your skin is going to look, and that red color comes from hemoglobin. That is the main protein inside your red blood cells that transports oxygen around to all of your uh, all of your tissues. Anytime you see redness on the surface of the skin, you guys should think increased blood flow. More blood is flowing there. Blood vessels are bringing more blood to the surface. Uh, for example, I actually have a red birthmark on my right hand. Um, if you have, and what that red birthmark is, I have an overgrowth of small blood vessels near the surface of my skin, so I constantly have an increased blood flow to this portion of my hand, and so it makes the skin look red in that location. So anytime you see red, think extra blood flow to the surface of the skin. Think about when you have a, a cut to the skin, or you have an infection in your skin. What does it look like? It looks red. The reason it's red is because your blood vessels um, in the skin dilate to increase the blood flow to the surface. And the reason that's happening is because the blood is bringing your white blood cells and other weaponry that you need to fight the infection and heal the uh, injury that you're having. So you'll have, anytime you have increased blood flow near the surface, you're going to take on a reddish color. All right, so that's it for this particular lecture. In the next one, we're going to start talking about all those various accessory structures that you have in the skin.
sitting down in there in the uh, dermis. We'll talk a little bit about what those uh, different things do for us.